And my goal is now to introduce a second set of conductors into my single gang nail on box. I'm going to follow the same path. More than one cable is permitted to enter through that same knockout. So I've got a second conductor. This one is my hot feet. I'm going to mark it with my colored electrical tape, not white or gray, because or green, because I want to indicate hot. Hot is my power feed. So when you get shocked on. So I'm going to put a little flag, real obvious and visible. Everything you do has to be obvious and visible to the extreme because most painters are going to spray right over this box. They're going to disguise the color coding and I want that flag to be readily evident. I don't want to just wrap it real tight on itself. So I'm trying to see the end game from the beginning and I have to anticipate that before I get back here to work on any of these wires on the finish out, I will have been to a dozen, two, three dozen different job sites. I can't keep mental track of these wires. They're not that important. So I'm leaving myself all the clues and indicators for a smooth, seamless, successful finish out. At this point, I'm going to terminate the box and I'm going to install a GFCI for temporary power. I have my Milwaukee strippers. I'm going to take three quarters of an inch stripped off the end of each wire. This is 14 gauge wire. So I've noted my 14 gauge hole, strip hole. That's prepped. I'm now going to crimp my grounds. So I'm laying my conductors in the box so they're not twisted and wrapped around each other. I'm gonna slide that crimp sleeve, just a small, smooth copper sleeve over both grounding conductors. I'm gonna use my crimp tool, my diagonal cutters with built-in crimpers to firmly secure that crimp sleeve over both grounding conductors. I'm gonna cut off the shorter of the two. There's only one terminal on my GFCI receptacle for grounding conductors. That's the green screw. I now have my number one flathead. A lot of people get confused about this because the screw terminal on the GFCI looks a little bit like a Phillips or a flathead, but it's actually designed for a number one square drive. That's the perfect fit. GFCI protection, ground fault circuit interrupter protection is required for temporary power on job sites. That's why I'm using this device. They cost anywhere from $10 to $30, depending on your point of purchase. Now I'm gonna take my set of two conductors, black and white, and I'm gonna terminate the one with the flag on the side indicated line. I'm gonna insert it into either of the two holes, and I'm gonna snug it. This is not the time for death grip. You will strip out the screw, but you want firm and snug without any play or slop. I'm going to take my neutral conductor, insert it into one of either two holes at the white terminal marked line side. I'm going to repeat this process except with the load side. On the back of the GS GFCI it says load. Load is what is being powered. I'm going to insert my white conductor into either of the two holes. Snug it, black conductor into the hole with the brass screw, black to brass. Then I'm going to take my grounding conductor, I'm going to insert into the ground hole. I want to get it under, I'm going to be mindful of the nuance of the GFC I'm using. There's a grounding plate underneath the grounding screw. Now I've inserted my grounding conductor under that plate and I've secured my grounding conductor. Now because this is temporary use, this box will not be fitted with an electrical plate. That electrical plate would impede the installation of drywall finishing and paint. So I'm going to take electrical tape and I'm going to wrap the device securely to insulate the terminals. Total of three wraps of electrical tape to prevent shock hazard to anyone who comes after me. 
I'm gonna leave my screws free. Break it off. Now I'm going to fold my conductors into the box. Not stuff, stuff is a bad word. We're gonna fold them in. I'm gonna give them each a home. The GFCI is a deep device, as you'll see, deeper than most receptacles, two to three times as deep. And so I really wanna be conscious to fold those conductors into the box to provide plenty of space for the GFCI to sit without pinching or kinking. Again, I'm using my number one square drive. This is an insulated handle, nine inch long square drive. It's my preferred implement for all electrical devices, residential and commercial. I'm gonna seat the top screw, I'm gonna seat the bottom screw, and then I'm going to depress the device fully to make sure it's a good fit without feeling the pressure of conductors behind the GFCI. Snug it all the way down. Again, this is plastic threaded box. It's not meant for the death grip. I'm just gonna snug it down. Next, we're gonna be bringing additional cables into the box, labeling all of them with a clear purpose so that when the walls are finished, we come back at a later date, total confidence about the purpose of each conductor.